This module introduces the concept of a first login into the IP20C element. This module will cover the following topics. Initial connection to the IP20C unit. What to do to connect to the IP20C in case you don't know the IP of the element. How to establish a connection to the command line interface of your element. Brief overview of how the home page looks like after a successful login. Next, we look at how to find out and change the IP of your network element. We look at how to set the unit to factory default configuration. Finally, a brief overview of the basic web menu elements for managing your equipment. Each IP20C network element comes from the factory with this information available. The default IP address of the element is 192.168.1.1. The default username and password are admin and admin. Users will connect to the element using a computer connected via Ethernet cable to the management port of the element. The management port is the one furthest away from the power port, like demonstrated above. The cable used for this is a straight crimping on each end with RJ45 plugs. You need to have your computer in the same subnet as the network element to access it through this IP. There are scenarios in which the client does not know or has lost the IP of the element. It's rare, but it can happen. There is a protection implemented IP in each unit. This is IP is 192.0.2.1 and can be accessed by using the specific Y-Splitter cable designed for this. The Y-Splitter cable has one end that goes into the IP20C and two connections that are available, Channel 1 and Channel 2. Channel 1 is used for the normal connection explained before. Channel 2 is used in addition with a cross-connected cable for accessing the protection IP 192.0.2.1. To access this IP, you need to change the IP of your computer to something in the same subnet as 192.0.2.128. So your computer can have something between 2 and 14 as the last group of digits in the IP address. Next, connect your computer via a cross-connected Ethernet cable to channel 2 port of the Y-Splitter cable and you should have access. Once connected to the element, log in and change the IP address to something that you need on your network and access it from then on, via that IP. You can produce the protection cable from normal Ethernet cable. Using this crimping of, pins 1, 2, 3 and 6 connected to pins 4, 5, 7 and 8. To connect to the element via command line interface, you can use the Telnet utility that needs to be installed in Windows or use another terminal connection utility, like PuTTY. With Telnet installed, just open the command prompt in Windows, write Telnet and the IP of the element. The same username and password are applicable as in web login. Let us, now, have a look at some general help buttons in the command line interface. Press twice the tab key for optional commands in actual directory. Use the tab key to auto-complete a syntax. Use the arrow keys to navigate through recent commands. Use the question mark to list helpful commands. Type exit key to jump out from a menu and queue to end a session that is in progress. This is an example of information session that can be ended with the press of the Q button. This is a multi-rate multi-constellation report in 15 minutes interval. This is how to find out and how to set the IP address of the element from both command line interface and web graphical user interface. Use these commands to find out the IP address of the element and also to set a new IP for your element. To the left you have the CLI commands and to the right of the screen you can see how to do it under the web interface. To set your machine to factory default, use this command under CLI or follow these steps to do the same in the web interface. A confirmation is required for both ways. Please keep note that the IP address of the element will not be changed after a set to factory default command. Now, let's look at a short overview of the web management menu. In order to manage locally the IP20C via web EMS you need to connect to the management protection port of IP20C with Ethernet CAT5 cable. Check that the Ethernet link is up and make sure that your PC's IP address belongs to the same subnet as the unit's default one, that is 192.168.1.128. 
is ripping command from command prompt or putty and if you have replies then open a web browser and input the IP20C's management IP address. The first page that the user observes after a correct login includes two sides. A unit summary and a radio summary page, with all the first-hand relevant information for this node. On the unit summary page you will see descriptive information about the unit at hand, including the operational time, operating system version, unit temperature and unique serial number. A list of current alarms, present at the moment, on the element, is also shown here, for some quick troubleshooting starting point along with the outdoor unit's inventory. The radio summary page gathers the key link and radio parameters on a single page for quick viewing. To display the radio summary page, select radio summary from the web BMS main menu. The radio summary page includes link status for radio carrier, including whether or not the link is up, groups to which the link is assigned, such as leg, x pick, protection, and, or multi-carrier ABC, and the IP address, both IP version 4 and IP version 6, of the remote carrier. Radio information the TX and RX frequencies, frequency separation, and channel bandwidth on which the link is operating. Remote radio parameters contains the key information about the status of the remote carrier. Radio transmitter shows mute status, maximum and operational TX level, modulation, and bitrate. Radio receiver contains the receiver PMs and statistics, including defective blocks, modem MSE, and RX level, modulation, and bitrate. The radio summary page can be customized to include only specific columns and tables. This enables you to hide information you do not need in order to focus on the information that is most relevant. To hide a specific section of the radio summary page, click the section title. To display a section that has been hidden, click the section title again. The local network parameters can be set under Platform, Management, Networking, Local. You can configure both IPv4 and IPv6 versions on the IP20 platform. This is the main view of the element. The screen is comprised of three different sections, like you can observe here. To the left side, you can see the menu tree with a search button at the upper part, to look for specific text strings inside the menu titles. To the lower right side, you can see a picture of the managed element. The rest is the main selection view where you can find the most severe alarms and the current alarms tab. The main unit parameters are visible under the platform management tab of the menu. You can see here a list of parameters like the name of the unit, the unit description, the system uptime, the unit temperature and the current voltage input. The rest are a list of editable fields to accommodate more information about this unit. IP20C supports network time protocol. NTP is a networking protocol for clock synchronization between computer systems over packet switched, variable latency data networks. Network time protocol distributes coordinated universal time, or UIC throughout the system, using a jitter buffer to neutralize variable latency. Version 3 and version 4 of this protocol are supported by the IP20 platform. You can configure the date and time parameters under platform, management, time services. IP20C uses coordinated universal time for time and date configuration. The user needs to input the correct UTC offset from GMT for valid date and time information. The Interface Manager, found under Platform, Management, Interface Manager is the place where the user can enable or disable various interfaces of the network element. For example this machine has two radio interfaces and two Ethernet ports available to configure. By default, the Ethernet interfaces are down and the radios are up, but muted, that is, not transmitting. Each machine has its own unique serial number and that can be used for generating activation keys from Saragon's license management system. Find it. The interface manager, found under platform, management, interface manager is the place where the user can enable or disable various interfaces of the network element. For example this machine has two radio interfaces and two Ethernet ports available to configure. By default, 
The Ethernet interfaces are down and the radios are up, but muted. That is, not transmitting. Each machine has its own unique serial number and that can be used for generating activation keys from Seragon's license management system. Find it under Platform, Management, Inventory. The unit info file is a troubleshooting tool to help the customer support team analyze and troubleshoot errors. There is a process used to create this file, which will be detailed in other sessions, later. For now, just remember that you need a file transfer protocol server to create and export this file to and that this can be done under platform, management, unit info. This is the menu subpart which covers reset of the machine. Reset and set to default are two very different commands, please make sure which one you are committing to. For clearing the entire configuration on the network element, you need to set to default. For creating an external protection group, like a 1 plus 1 or 2 plus 2 hot standby you will need two IP20C and you start the process from platform, management, unit redundancy. The IP20C can work with simple network management protocol, or SNMP. You can configure it under platform, management, SNMP, SNMP parameters. SNMP is a standard protocol for collecting and organizing information about managed devices on IP networks and for modifying that information to change device behavior. Part of the SNMP protocol is the concept of SNMP traps, which are unsolicited information alarms sent from the element, which is an agent towards the SNMP server, which is manager. SNMP traps enable an agent to notify the management station of significant events by way of an unsolicited SNMP message. Up to four trap managers can be configured under platform, management, SNMP, trap managers. This is where to configure the SNMP v3 user settings. SNMP version 3 defines a user-based security mechanism that enables per message authentication and encryption. This is where you can set up version 3 users and rights. Static and dynamic monitoring is available for SFP modules, including all SFP, SFP+, and CSFP modules used in Ethernet and the MIMO ports in IP20 all outdoor products. Dynamic monitoring, DDM, PMs are also available, but only via the CLI. Please note that DDM parameters are not relevant for electrical SFPs. In the SFP transceiver field, select the SFP interface about which you want to display the following information. Transceiver present indicates whether an SFP module is attached to the interface. Connector type always displays LC. Transceiver type displays a description of the SFP module. Vendor name shows the name of the SFP's vendor. Vendor part number displays the vendor's part number for the SFP module. Vendor serial number is the vendor's serial number for the SFP module. Vendor revision displays the revision number of the serial number provided by the vendor for the SFP module. Laser wavelength in nanometers displays the SFP module's laser wavelength. For CSFP modules, two wavelengths are displayed. This parameters is not relevant for copper SFPs. Link length SM fiber, the maximum length of the cable, in kilometers, for single mode fiber cables. Link length OM1 fiber, indicates the maximum length of the cable, in meters, for OM1 multimode fiber cables. The same goes for the other OM multimode fiber cables. We also have here the SFP digital diagnostic monitoring, DDM, parameters. Optical Diagnostics Supported displays whether the SFP module supports DDM monitoring. The modules that do not support DDM monitoring, the parameters below are not available. RX Power Level, the SFP module's current RX Power Signal Strength, in DBM. TX Power Level, the SFP module's current TX Power Signal Strength, in DBM. Bias Current. The laser bias current of the SFP module, in MA. Temperature shows the current temperature of the SFP module, displayed in both C degrees and F degrees. If no signal is being received, RX power level is displayed as minus 40 dBm. 
If the admin status of the port is down, the TX power level is displayed as minus 40 dBm and the bias current is displayed as 0 mA. The temperature is always shown as long as the SFP module is inserted in the port. The undervoltage and overvoltage thresholds can be configured via web PMS and CLI. The PMs can be displayed via CLI only. The default thresholds for IP20C and IP20C HPR, undervoltage raised threshold, 32 volts, undervoltage clear threshold, 34 volts, overvoltage raised threshold, 60 volts, and overvoltage clear threshold, 58 volts. The current module has covered the following topics. 1. How to find out the IP20C IP address. 2. Web and command line interface login. 3. CLI general commands. Get the IP address. Set another IP address. Unit set to default. 4. A web graphical user interface management and general menu overview. Thank you for your attention.